Hi and welcome to the next part of V-Ray for Maya. In the last video we went over the basics and render globals. That was the introductory video. In this video we're going to do something a little more specific and get some useful production render settings for you. These production settings are based on Robert Niederhorst's paper, so thanks to him. You can find that on the V-Ray documentation webpage, link to the V-Ray um, for Maya Primer by Niederhorst. It's a PDF and everything in here, for the most part, we're going to go over on uh, this video. So uh, let's get started. So the basic idea of the Niederhorst settings are to reduce the uh, complexity and number of controls for good image quality down to one main area. And technically two, but I'll show you that as well. So the Niederhorst settings rely on adaptive uh, deterministic Monte Carlo. So make sure to switch that over. And the idea is to get all the, the quality of, of all your images down to this threshold setting. So let's start out with uh, getting everything set up properly. Under the settings tab, this adaptive amount slider is the control for telling V-Ray how adaptive it should be, obviously. If it's set to zero, then you will have to manually set all of your Monte Carlo random sampling objects like um, your area lights or your reflective and refractive glossy settings. All those things that require Monte Carlo random sampling will have to be manually set. So that's like mental ray style and a pain in the butt. Adaptive amount fully to one allows V-Ray's adaptive DMC mode to take that over. So setting this to one you can now ignore the adaptive threshold and the, those samples and the multiplier because that's all controlled in the adaptive DMC over here. You also might want to turn time dependent on if you're doing an animation so that your noise will be randomly changed from frame to frame. So that's basically it for the settings tab. Let's uh, move back over to the V-Ray tab where we have our image sampler and under the adaptive DMC mode you'll see uh, the anti-aliasing filter and controls and the idea is that this threshold control now controls the entire quality of your image. So to quick go over the anti-aliasing filter you want to set that to Gaussian most likely some of these other filters are nice but in terms of compositing later on they can introduce artifacts because they're sharpening filters um, Gaussian is essentially a soften filter and it will soften your image slightly but it won't do so in a comp unfriendly way so we tend to, I tend to keep it there um, change the size if you want to is a pretty good pretty good place to be on the average image size so the adaptive DMC settings you can set your min subdivs to one so for an image say with a lot of black area a lot of empty space the min subdivs of one is probably appropriate so that those areas render faster if you up your minimum subdivisions then even those blank areas will take longer to render the max subdivs is set rather high. Um, the reason being is you want to make sure that a high glossy scene has a lot of samples available. You generally set this higher than you really need because the threshold will find the point at which it doesn't need to sample anymore. So a 0.05 threshold is very low quality. I believe the default is uh, 0.01 threshold and that will be a fairly good production setting with a little bit of noise but very nice for stills. If you're doing an animation you may find you need to reduce the noise even further so you might go down as far as a 0.05 for your contrast threshold. Now you may be wondering what this contrast threshold is. If you're familiar with Mental Ray then you have a pretty good idea already but uh, it's the difference in contrast from one pixel to the next. The lower that contrast value, the smoother the image and essentially the higher sampling quality your image has. If you set this contrast threshold up higher then it will allow for a greater contrast between two pixels and therefore make a blockier image. So as I mentioned 0.005 is, is very high quality setting 
you'll probably be fine in, for stills with a 0.01, but that's up to you. So that's basically it for the image sampling and V-Ray tab. The uh, little side note is that the sampler type can be essentially used as a way to switch between production rendering and, and fast rendering, adaptive DNC being your high quality production render, and you can switch to fixed rate at a low subdivs for faster preview renders. So that little tip uh, from Marco Manderic. So let's move on to the indirect illumination tab in the last part of this puzzle. Make sure that GI is turned on. Uh, under primary bounces, you'll want to set that to brute force. And under secondary, you'll set that to light cache. Brute force settings, you can leave it at default. And the light cache settings are generally default. You can adjust these if you want, but nearest is, is generally the best filter type for light cache. You want to set your number of passes. Again, this is from the intro videos, but set the number of passes to the number of cores that you have. So I'm on an 8-core machine, so we'll leave that at 8. And the subdivs is, as uh, from my earlier video, I generally set that to near the uh, longest side of my image. So if I'm rendering a 1080p image, it would be 1920 by 1080p, so 1920 would be a fine starting point. So let's put it there. Sample size generally doesn't need to be adjusted except in very specific situations. And one last tweak for the neater horse settings is to make sure to use light cache for glossy rays. That allows light cache to do some of the uh, calculation for glossies and will speed up glossy calculations in uh, the later portion. So that is basically it for neater horse settings. You can definitely set a preset for that. So save settings as preset. One thing I've noted is that unfortunately when you save a preset in, uh, in V-Ray render globals it also saves the common V-Ray common settings, which is generally unwanted. So I often open up my pre saved preset in a text editor and comment out all the parts that I don't like. Currently a bit of a pain, but um, I definitely have presets for linear workflow, uh, virtual frame buffer, or V-Ray frame buffer. And uh, I'll share that with you guys as well on my website. And that's it for this video. Thanks, and take care.